because you've not got these strict guidelines that you have to have lunch at this hour, you have to have morning tea at this hour, you can't be late, you're just dictated by time, so it's all can't, can't, can't. You, uh, um, whereas at Rival, it's all about what you can do and what you're good at, and you just feel good. <laughs> It was quite funny because uh, before we moved down here I was reading the Lifestyle magazine and I read an article about what a great company it was and how it came about and I actually thought, wow, what a cool place to work. Giving flexibility and respect and letting people sort of self-manage how they work and when they can opens up just a whole different level of what they will give to their employer. Being able to go to the kids' sports days and house singing and cross country, it shouldn't just be a privilege because we're the business owners. It needed to be something that everyone was entitled to. I'm supposed to work around 25 hours and I normally have a Thursday off, so Josh is still only just turned three, so it's a nice day to have at home with him. Isabella's only just started school, so I used to sort of do a few more, but my hours have dropped a little bit at the moment just while I'm settling her in because drop off are still a little challenging. Yeah, most of the time it's people coming on board with what suits them and what, and what suits the business as well. Flexibility really became a core piece of our growth. This is an expert organisation nationally. I don't want to be doing, dealing with people's timesheets and checking up on them and checking up if they're taking annual leave and that sort of thing. In school holidays, um, a lot of us mums need to be at home with the kids, so I was thin on the ground at times. So um, now we have a pod system or a buddy system, if you like, uh, where some, somebody else knows how to do what we do and and we work out between us who's going to be here when. Everyone has an app on their phone, so from their point of view they have to put, it, put in their hours each day, and so the hours get put on the phone, and then um, that just gets sent through to me. literally takes me for 18 people, would take me five minutes each Monday morning. We pay weekly. On a day-to-day -day basis, I can come to the office, and some people are here and some people aren't. They are... Um, I don't know, cooperating, collaborating, um, I'm not sure what the right word is. We sat down and we said to everybody, what's important to you? Some of the business things actually ended up on top because the team understood that it was the business things that were going to drive those rules. When we walk in that door, it's game on. It's head down, bum up, it's work. At the end of the day, it's all about we just want our clients. We want them to be happy, we want the best for them. The benefits are, are massive in terms of what we have. I mean, there's the culture, there's the engagement, there's the staff retention, there's the business processes, there's the specialised roles in terms of making sure we've got the right bums on seats along the way. The thing that I'm the most proud of is the team are taking ownership of those roles and really making them their own. My son was turning 10 these holidays and he said, oh, mum, you know, can you spend the day with me? And I suppose I didn't even think. I just said, yeah, of course I can. It meant a lot to Bo, you know. He, he, you know, and he said that night, you know, that was really cool, Mum. Thanks heaps, you know. You don't get it back, do you? You don't get your boy turning 10 back. Yeah, it was great. It was amazing, actually. Yeah, perfect. Now, um, you can put away your tissues and stop crying because I always get a bit emotional when watching that. Um, but you're probably wondering why is someone who um, is not from a farming business here preaching to you all today? So I just want to introduce myself a little bit in our team and what I'm really hoping for is some cross-pollination. I'm not saying exactly what we do is going to work for you exactly in your business, but uh, you will see our rules uh, that we have proudly displayed on our, our, our wall on our office and I've given those all to you and on the back which really mucks with my OCD because I want to go like that and it flips but um, the idea is this is for something to inspire you take away and maybe you can do it yourselves and if there's something that resonates with what I share today jot it down on the back because I don't know about you but I go to many of these events and it's when you get one idea or you take one action point and it makes a one percent difference that's where it counts. So I uh, am a financial advisor and uh, own and operate uh, Rival Wealth with my husband, Tim. We have a team of 20 and we're a national organisation um, based out of Masterton. So my question is to you, where are you at? Um, if you have a team or you don't have a team, or are you growing a team? Are you looking to bring on people that eventually are going to be your succession plan? I think 
When we employ people, we always need to have the vision for it's a longer term. And I think you retain and attract great staff when you spell out the opportunity to those who, who are joining you. Um, I've got my farm advisor here today, uh, the lovely Donna, uh, who also operates a farm. They, I think it was, put out an application for a junior shepherd role and got 25 applicants, uh, 13 male and 10 female, which I think is fantastic and down to a short list. But when you're looking at the next generation of farmers coming on board, um, that tells me there's a bit of a, a shortage of roles when there's a high number of applicants. Uh, but you need to be asking yourself, are they the right person for the longer term? And making sure that you're going through a really good uh, process where you're making sure you're getting the right bums on the seats. Are they there? Do you want someone you can develop? Or do you want someone just to do the donkey work? Are they someone who potentially could be an equity partner? You know, you need to have those decisions sort of made and clear in your head and understand your business goals before you can really get anyone else on board. Because if you're not clear on where you're going, it's very hard to get your staff or your team on, on the same page. So today I'm going to have a little chat to you about these things that we do. And again, uh, you're not going to rip them off totally because they may not work exactly as they do for us, for you. But I'm going to talk about purpose goals and our rules. I'm going to talk about flexibility and, and self-management, uh, planning days, best practice, some of the things that we do on a, a very consistent basis, uh, technology, staff benefits, looking outside of maybe the traditional ones that you offer. And at the end of the day, getting together and celebrating because as business owners, whether you're a financial advisor, uh, a farmer, or, or, or in retail, whatever it is, you choose to be self-employed. You choose, you've, you've chosen your destiny and you choose to make an income to live your life. So why not make it fun along the way? So these are our rules. And uh, I just want to make it really clear that Tim and I did not stand at the front of the board off boardroom and say, this is what the rules are. This is a really, truly collaborative approach. We asked everyone what was important to them. Uh, and like Tim said on the video, the, the business thing sort of rose to the top. But we had about 30 suggestions, and then we went through and we, we we put them out to the team again and we collaborated and people ranked them. So this is a true reflection of what everyone in our office believes. It's proudly displayed on our wall. And if anyone has a question, um, generally it's answered by one of these rules. So especially, does everyone know what a cronut is? Yeah. Uh, we do them really well in the Wairapa, if ever you're going through Clearville Bakery or 10cc. But basically, we have an unwritten rule from a mental health perspective. If there's no custard in your cronut, stay in bed. Because it doesn't do any good for our business or for them if they're pushing themselves further than they need to be pushed. So that's just an unwritten rule. And it doesn't just apply to me, it applies to, to everyone in our team. Um, comfy chairs and good coffee is obviously, yours could be a safe motorbikes and good smoko and, you know, um, whatever's relevant to you. But it's displayed and every, every, every single time someone has a question, it comes back to this. Can I go to school sports? Well... Of course you can, because we say you, we never miss family events, so neither should you. If it's good enough for us, it's absolutely good enough for our team. And I'd, I'd, I'd say we breathe it. Uh, I'm, there's a farm, oh, I'm sure you've heard of George and Sarah Tatham. I presented this on the AM show, and she messaged me straight away. They've just gone through an exercise and done this with their teams, and it works wonders, and they've got it displayed proudly as well. Our mission statement. Now, I don't expect you to have the same mission statement. Um, my brother and sister-in-law, uh, they don't have any employees, but they have many contractors who come onto their property with sharing and, um, and all the other various bits of things that I'm trying to pretend like I know about. Um, having articulated what is important to you in your business and how you operate, and sharing that with your internal 
team and your external partners sets the expectation for the service that you're going to give each other and it makes for a really enjoyable playing ground. So if you haven't got a mission statement, even if you're a husband and wife team and you, or you're, you're at the stage of building your team, it's a really important part to, place to start. Now, one of our colleagues, um, and oh, can I just say, we're not perfect at this. We lost two staff members last week. We've replaced them with three, but one left because she was returning to nursing, and the other one um, didn't want to move into an advisor or had been with us for five years. And naturally, sometimes people grow, and they do outgrow you, and that's OK, as long as they leave as an ambassador. Uh, but she, we were talking one day, and she said, her 10-year-old daughter had told her about this awful thing she'd seen on social media. And I was like, oh my God, I'm not sure that my son would tell me if he'd seen something like that. And she said, well, it's easy. It's in our ICT. And I was like, oh, what's your ICT? And she was like, it's our Internet and Communications Treaty. So she sat down with her girls, and her girls made the rules of when they had to escalate things. And they self-manage. So... And I kind of reflected and I thought, well, that's exactly what we do. If we let our team make the rules, instead of always in giving instructions, let them come up with it and get involved, then they're going to self-manage and that's going to save you time. And you are going to be able to leave the, the big jobs to other people and not just have this martyr kind of um, attitude that uh, if it's not done right, if it's not you that's done it. We just need to get people involved and let people get involved, and that's what flexibility and self-management is. Now, I appreciate flexibility um, and these wonderful things happening at Perpetual Guardian where they have a four-day working week, and that's not always practical. I don't think, well, it's certainly not in our business, or if you owned a, uh, a supermarket, um, you know, saying, sorry, we're going to be open, not that, we're going to shut for a whole day but still pay our staff the same amount. It, you don't, that's taking it to nine-tenths of the law. I think it's just about you saying it is okay for your team to prioritise their family over work. It's really just as simple as that. Now one thing we do, and we've done it from when we were, there were three of us to, to now there are 20 of us, so every year we have three planning days. So we take our team off site for three days. Um, Throughout the day, there are, I'm going to show you a sample agenda, but we all get the one idea or the one moment and we put it in a task list and then it's followed up the next week at a morning tea and then it's followed up. And once we hit 95% completion, Tim usually takes us all for lunch and we all order Pinot Grey or if he's been a bit mean, bubbles or whatever it is. But there's always, we like anything, you want a reward. So. You've got to keep that in mind. Now, planning day, you might not be able to do what I'm about to suggest, but if you're going to the field days, take your younger members of team with you. Stop for dinner on the way home. And then the week after, have a scheduled morning tea where you all have to spend five minutes presenting the best idea that you found from field days. And then you agree on one to implement as a team. That's all it really needs to be. It may not be as structured as what I'm about to go through. So in January, for us, it's about looking at the year that's passed, and we give our um, team financial information, you know, they, uh, you know, how we've done on targets, what the revenue's been, uh, if we've lost or if we've gained or, or where exactly we're at. We review the year, and then we also plan the year. And every single member of our team, before they get there on that day, goes through this traffic light. So they think about what's well, one thing that they think we should st stop doing because it's not working, one thing that we should continue doing, and one thing that maybe we should start doing. Now, who thinks Tim and I come with ideas or lead the session? Oh, you're all experts. No, we sit back and listen. And do you know what? Our best ideas and the reason we are where we are and recognised on a national level, not only by our industry body, but by a large government organisation, is because it's everyone else's ideas and it's truly a collaborative approach. And then in June, it's about professional development and we actually take our team to Wellington. We get out of the Wairapa. 
50% um, of our clients are in the Wairapa, the other 50% are spread around the country. Tim and I travel a lot, but our team generally are in the Wairapa. The, the, the beautiful thing about technology, you can work anywhere. Uh, so we have a planning, de uh, a more of a professional development day that we go on, and we use our contacts. So in your industry, it might be, um, you know, if you've got a team getting the, the FERC guys and getting uh, beef and lamb, getting the banking, getting, you know, uh, some bigger pictures sort of stuff and, and, and filling their knowledge belt as well. And then we always have fun and people go, oh God, how do you come up with all these ideas? But it's easy. So we've been karting, um, bull riding, toilet racing, cooking classes, anything non-work related that creates relationships and builds friendships and really makes it a work family, not just a work place, but a work family. So this is the agenda that um, Tim finally finished. Um, I don't think he knows that I'm sharing this with the world, so if there's any spelling mistakes, they're not mine. Uh, but just to give you a bit of an idea about the things that we talk about, so we've got an industry expert coming in. Um, Tim's going to give a bit of an overview. Uh, last year we started an accountancy firm, so we're getting an overview from them. Uh, there's an economist coming in from the ANZ. We always love the AMP Capital Economist. If ever you get the chance to invite Bevan Graham to talk to your team, he is awesome. Uh, we're having a quiz, lunch, a bit of an overview. Someone else is coming in to do something about presenting. Oh, I should have done that last week. Uh, the Ombudsman's coming in. We talk about mental health. Um, and then we're going for a drink, we're going to a cooking class, and then we're checking into a hotel in town. And our team love it. They love that we think that they are that important that we want to spend time with them and really encourage them. And then in September, um, obviously not such a great time for you. You're busy with lambing and all that kind of jazz, so it might not. you might be doing this earlier in the year. But for us, it's a chance to go, right, We've got to hear this year, but we still need to get to hear. So what's working? Again, what's not working well? What's our focus and what are we doing? And we've all got our heads together. My next suggestion, and I know you do it well because I have friends in the industry, um, is meet and eat together. Same place, same time with a purpose. So we always have every... Uh, we have a larger female office, but I know you blokes are just as gossipy as we are, if not worse. And every second Tuesday, we have a baking roster. And so someone in the office bakes and we sit down and everyone um, chews the fat, for want of a better word, and we catch up and then we go through our serious agenda. And our agenda is everything from our modes register to tasks outstanding to development, innovation, what do you need to know, is Trump doing something stupid, what's an update with the trade wars, whatever it is, there's an agenda. And on that agenda, if anyone in our office has something important to talk about or they have a question or they want something explored, checks on the agenda and we all talk about it. Um, and just for the record, um, neither Tim or I um, did this morning tea, it was one of our team, Carmel. So I think if you're an owner-manager and you are always the one providing the food, there is mana and respect in providing for others. So I'm sure if you have team members, ask them to step up once in a while. Um, you'll be challenged them, maybe putting them outside their comfort zone, but they'll love it, they absolutely love it. And we end up with awesome things like ice cream and chocolate sauce and there are no size sixes in our office. I don't know, <laughs> you're pretty close. Uh, the other thing we have, and this is a compliance thing, but I've bastardised it a little bit for, one, for today, so it's not so negative, but we have a moan register. You can imagine if we do anything wrong and lose anyone money, which we don't, but if there's any, you know, um, a claim which takes too long or an underwriter who's just doing our head in, we log it. If someone makes a mistake and trades too much oil or something, we log it and we talk about it. No one is reprimanded for making a mistake in our office. It is all logged, we recognise it, and it's very much a culture of you need to learn from it. 
Um, one of our accountant, uh, our rural accountant who's based in our office, her friend um, had started a job for another friend. Everyone knows everyone in the rural, um, no names. But anyway, he was moving a flock of sheep down the road and 150 got onto a foresty road and you can imagine they just went and went away. Um, I know that the generation before him, um, he would have been, oh, you're bloody useless. And, you know, it would have been terrible in the end of the world. Um, and this would have been a prime time to go, right, well, let's log it. Let's have a moan register or a mistake register so that we can learn, use it as a learning for other people. So how do we know that's not going to happen again? <laughs> Fair dinkum mistake? Well... Yeah, but hopefully you don't have to make it twice. And I bet you they felt bad for it, but you're not going to build. Everyone makes mistakes. You learn from mistakes, and you build loyal employees when you foster an environment where you're not going to kill them for it, you know? That's how you build loyalty. Uh, technology, and I think this is really important, um, learning things all the time in our industry. Um, and I think that's one thing I admire the most about your industry is that you have beef and lamb and the red meat and everyone sort of, um, I know I'm in competition with virtual fencing. I mean, who would have thought that? That's some, you know, you've got so much innovation in, in, at your fingertips. Uh, so I think it's really important that we embrace it. Tim mentioned on the video, we, we asked our staff when they wanted to be paid, and I think for sometimes in a managing or an owner role, you think, oh, it's monthly because it's much easier for me, much easier for me. But we asked our team, and they were wanting weekly. So we then had to find a system that made that easy. I know a good friend of mine, Gretchen Bunny, has the, the um, ag record. You know, you've got apps available where you can log tasks and, you know, communicate. The next generation, they get off on that stuff. They love it. So if you're not doing it and maximising every piece of technology at your fingertips, maybe that's something you should be writing down to investigate. And I'm not saying we have to be an expert at everything. Uh, but that's where you call an expert in or ask someone or get a farm advisor to tell you exactly what could benefit you and your team. Uh, staff benefits, uh, traditionally, uh, obviously, in your industry, a bit different to mine, um, meat, housing, petrol, motorbikes. Um, I don't think I've given any of those ever. <laughs> uh, but I challenge you to think about their financial well-being, and especially uh, the generation, uh, I like to say my generation, but the generation <laughs> below, uh, coming, not below, but behind us, young people younger than us. Um, they're not that great with money. And so if you have someone young in your team and you're looking to take them through the ranks or you've got a young family, um, care about their financial well-being. If you know they're terrible with money and in debt, have a conversation with them on the back of a bike. Um, do you want some help to get out? Shall we make a plan where I can pay half your wage into this and I'll help you out and we'll try and teach you some good habits? Actually give a give more than just their job. I think you retain good people when you really, when they feel you're really invested in them. Uh, so there's a product that we deal with a lot in, in farming, uh, and it works out to be about $15 an employee every fortnight, and it, it's a lump sum. There's no paperwork, no underwriting, but it's a 20 grand lump sum, and yes, they're going to get ACC, but they're not going to get a lump sum, or they often are living week to week. So that's a really cheap way for you to help out, and it might be that the deal is that you hold 10 grand so that you can you know, get a labour replacement unit pretty quickly, but then also you're the good bugger, or the great people, who are really showing that you care and help so that they don't have to set up a give a little page or, or go worse in a debt spiral. Um, income cover, you know, ACC is covering these, um, you know, your, your shepherds and your managers uh, in the event of an accident, but what if it's because of an illness? Uh, extending their sick leave beyond five days out to 65, that's a really 
good way of showing that you care about them not just now doing their job, but you're trying to make them a really integral part of your team and you trust them so you can leave them with the important stuff. Professional development, uh, if you're able to, bring your team to things like today. You know, help, help them step up in their knowledge. Don't be afraid when people get smarter than you. There are so many people in our office smarter than me, it's not funny. There's not, no laughs, but they obviously don't, can't see how that would be possible, but anyway. Um, but it's really important to develop the education and exposure of your team and not just be hungry at the top to get it all for yourself. And then the other one is um, care about their family. And health cover, uh, again, gets a bad rap and everyone goes, oh, it's so expensive. I guarantee if you have a, a staff member who then develops a pre-existing condition, you know, and you help them, you're able to help them through that, you've got a very loyal staff member for life. Uh, celebrate. Now, these are a few of the things that we do. Uh, again, adapt and take out how, however you wish. Uh, we have a, a Team Member of the Year Award. Uh, it gets voted on the first six months, and then we save it, and then it gets voted on the second six months by the rest of the team, not by Tim and I. And it gets presented at our January planning day, and it goes with like a hotel night and bubbles. Dancing, yeah, a few things Donna won it, obviously, there. Um, but we also have uh, monthly recognition. So we have, we wow people. So we have a, a, a sheet on our fridge in the office, and it's about people catching other people doing good, I was going to swear, but I won't because it's on video, good stuff. Okay, and going, wow, that was awesome. That was a really great call. That was a really awesome outcome for a client. Can't believe you did that. That's, you, uh, you helped when I really needed help. Thank you. Wow. And they get recorded. Um, and then every month, Tim gave up his car park, and for the, the wow of the month gets the boss's car park, basically. And so it doesn't actually cost us anything, but the status and the pride of being able to park in the prime spot is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we had 10 years in business last year, uh, and we invited all our clients for a big party, like a family party, bouncy castles, sausage sizzles, lolly scrambles, drinks, <laughs> everyone was catered for. Um, and our team actually arranged the cake. We didn't have anything to do with that. What a, it was a, such an awesome surprise. Uh, but not one, not one work anniversary gets missed in our business. Birthdays get recognised every single time. Uh, Christmas, as we've gotten bigger, um, you know, other people will organise scavenger hunts and various bits and pieces, but even I don't know what's happening on Christmas. That's the one thing that Tim takes every year, he does a Christmas party because he wants everyone to know how much they mean to him. And they're great, great celebrations. Uh, this year we went bowling, we had a hunt through Greytown, had to drink wine and eat a pizza and run to the TAB, put on a bet. It was a big race, it was great fun. Partners are invi invited, and so it's, uh, and it does become a, 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 a um, well, some more than others uh, are more in control, but it becomes a great evening, but it's such a great bonding event. And so then when we have planning days and we're talking about our team, they're referring to it as a work family. So my question to you is what are you going to do? Any questions, any gold nuggets, anything that you think you can adapt? Do I just wait for the questions? You can't talk to me, eh? No. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Most people, out, uh, we are probably the top, one of the top producing businesses in the country because we 
might seem we play hard, but we work really hard. And when people are there to work, we work. Uh, very rare that anyone takes a lunch break. Everyone's so excited and involved in the goals and the decision-making process that they take ownership for it. So they're so heavily invested in what we're doing. They all want our clients to be financially organised and successful. So as much fun as we have, there is no slacking. There's a real strong work ethic. Yes? Uh, I would say not. We just recruited and we were not the best from, a, um, from an hourly rate point of view, but the benefits and the culture and the little things we do, so when we meet Target, everyone gets a share of the pie. Um, you know, we give petrol vouchers and it's those added benefits and being made to feel more of a sense of a team is more important. We've had people um, leave banking and work for less with us just because they want the environment. Environment is key. Oh. Um, we have always been like, We've always been ambitious and goal-orientated. My husband and I travelled to Ireland prior to coming home, uh, and we always knew we wanted it, it to be bigger than us. And I think with any business, you're either growing or you're going. You're, you're making it work more efficient, or there are people who are smarter with more skill sets than you. So we've done this from day dot. What are we targeting during interviews? We are targeting um, fit with team before skills. We totally believe you can teach someone skills, but you can't make someone stop being an idiot or, or too loud or obviously obnoxious or, you know, you've really got to make sure you're employing people who fit with the current team. How's that? Any more? Oh, here we go. How do you build a strong team culture? I think it starts with um, if you run the farm by yourself, or or you have a, f or if you're a husband and wife operation, which is actually Tim and Tim's off a farm, so we often refer to us like a farming business because we are a, a, a we're both critical partners in the business. Uh, from the beginning, we made we had rules about when you could, we we don't talk. Hello, we don't talk shop at home. Um, you know, you have to have time where you, and we go away every year by ourselves without our children, just to remember that we actually do like each other. Uh, so I think we started small. We totally started small. And we've just always believed that people like doing business with good people. And the essence of that is being humankind being kind and treating others how you would like to be treated. And so we wanted to be, if anyone was, we've got global goals for our financial advisory business. We want to help the whole of New Zealand if we could. But it's about um, scaling that and not, not losing sight of who you are along the way. OK, so we have um, a KPI system, and there are different so I get a sheet, even I get a sheet <laughs> every fortnight. How many first appointments have I done? What business development have I done? Have I brought any clients on board or have I got referrals? And everybody in our office has a sheet relative to their role. And then we are all in you, so I get a score out of seven. And then it all goes into a, a, a spreadsheet and there's a running target. So the person who's on top of their KPIs, um, get a voucher every fortnight where someone is rewarded for doing their job well. So it's about consistency. It's about setting up a process and doing it well. But yes, uh, everyone is, is looked at as individuals in their role because you can't compare an apple to an orange. Any more? This is fun. It's like waiting. Yes, sir. I'm vocal about our debt every day when my husband tells me I can't have something. 
Um, I don't know, Donna. We don't, we, if someone asked us for our accounts within our team, we'd probably, uh, depending on various, well, yeah, see, that's a bit of a loaded question. Um, we don't really go through that. We definitely do percentages, because it's not relevant, really. They want to know if we're performing, and so we're giving it to them in a format that they can understand, and it all makes sense. Does it make sense? But if Donna wanted to see my accounts, okay, so that's the other thing, is I don't know about how many of you have, and this is off topic, but a plan B. So if something happened to us personally, we all have our wills and our guardianship sorted, but from a business point of view, have you got a plan B as in a succession plan? So if something happened to you, who knows what the alarm code is, who knows if you've paid the fertiliser, who knows to pay the wages, et cetera. So, uh, Tim and I obviously travel a bit together, so Donna is our plan B. She has all of our codes. This isn't creating motive. But the point being, if Donna asked to see our accounts, I'd have no problem giving them. Because it gives perspective, you know, uh, but Tim and I aren't driven by material objects either. We have a very strong sense of community, if that helps. Yeah, so I think ownership, and it doesn't necessarily have to be ownership from an asset uh, monetary point of view, it has to be an ownership from an ideas point of view. You have to look at what opportunity can you give someone in a remote area that is going to either grow their skills and, or attract them. What's something you could be doing differently or from a diversification point of view that you could get someone excited about? What are your cool goals which you need someone else to get involved with? Never had to make anyone redundant, no. Um, like I said, we've lost two staff in the last couple of weeks, uh, but both for really good reasons, and we encourage them. And I think if anyone leaves your business, you want them to be an ambassador. You want them, we've, um, one of our ladies was with us for five years, but she didn't want to move into an advisor role. And so she's gone to WBS because she believes that she can really help their archaic systems, which I think is awesome, and she'll do a great job. But, you know, we, we're at the sharp end of the stick in what we do. So sometimes you have to let people go, and that's okay. No, no, not really. Um, we had, we have a, oh, I don't want to get Jenny's age wrong. If she's here, she'd kill me. She looks like she's 21, but I'm sure she's closer to 60. Maybe? Yeah, she's at the latter. Um, and, and, and don't get me wrong, it takes a bit of coaching. Do you know what I mean? But some of her ideas of, that she presents are fantastic, and she's a realist, and she's very practical, and she goes, oh, that's great in theory, but that wouldn't work. And everyone goes, oh, okay. So it's, a re again, we're not ageist or, or sexist from that perspective. Thank you. Oh, one more? I keep looking at the screen. No more. Thank you very much.